I remembered when David was really young how he saw and understood things much faster than I did. His brain worked very, very well. And I always saw David as a kind of a, not as a wrestler, but as a chess player. Back in the 70s, Palo Alto and this whole area was a hub of counterculture type activity. Ken Kesey was living in Stanford, and they had all those acid tests and all that stuff around here. So there's always kind of that hippie atmosphere. Palm trees, fishies. Dave was a free spirit and grew up in a very relaxed and open-minded environment where he was able to develop as a person on his own. I think his reins were a lot looser and you could kind of see that. Dave was wrestling for the junior high when I first met him. He came to me and asked if he could wrestle with my high school kids. He was always looking to the next level. So I met him, he came over to the high school to one of our practices. If you looked at him at that point, you, you wouldn't have thought wrestler, you definitely wouldn't have thought wrestler. You wouldn't have thought athlete, period. But with Dave, it was 24 hours a day, wrestling. He carried a notebook with him all the time. It was filled with wrestling moves. Dave is very intellectual about his pursuit of wrestling. And I grew up on Stanford campus, so I was used to seeing all these professors that are kind of dorky, you know, just so focused on their subject matter, they could really care less about what they look like. I think that's how he was. Almost like California gypsy type of guy. Traveling around looking for more wrestling knowledge. David didn't need anything but his own will to succeed on his own terms. 